Hi guys, welcome to the channel and finally a new video. This is still very much an active channel. I've got loads of stuff I want to release, loads of stuff planned. It's just been a very busy few months working on other projects that have taken a lot longer than I thought, but I'm really excited to get back into the channel releasing lots of new content. This was a Zoom demonstration from last year, so unfortunately I didn't record the palette. However, I do think there's still lots of good information in here. I think people will still enjoy this. I'm going to share it with you. Let's have a little look. So I'm using 100% cotton watercolour paper. Um, this is a sheet off a gummed block. It's A3 size. And the, the paper that I love using is Bao Hong watercolour paper. It's a Chinese brand. Um, I really love it. The colours come out very bright and bold on it. Uh, the colours are really crisp and clean as well. Um, it's quite a forgiving paper and it also stays wet a long time and it's got a beautiful texture. Probably can't see the texture too well. It's got a lovely kind of rough texture to it. Um, in terms of brushes, I keep a very simple brush set from almost all of my paintings. I have a bigger mop or quill. This particular one is a medium size Winsor & Newton synthetic squirrel hair. Bit of a mouthful. I also use the Winsor & Newton synthetic sable brushes. These are a round, your kind of workhorse bog standard brush. Uh, size 8, size 10. That's for kind of homing in on smaller areas and dry brush work. And then one of my absolute favourite little brushes is this one here. It's not particularly expensive. It's a Jackson's Art Supplies own brand. Uh, it's Again, it's faux squirrel hair. It's their Raven range and it's a size 0. These two obviously hold a lot of pigment and a lot of water, but they also come to a nice fine point. So uh, really love those for the bigger washes than the smaller round brushes for detailing. Um, I use mostly Holbein and uh, Daniel Smith watercolours. I just seem to favour them after trying many. The colours I'm going to be using for this one are a cool Prussian blue. So it's got a bit more of a cool bias. Uh, makes some slightly more vibrant greens if I decide I want them, but also makes lovely deep darks, especially when you combine it with a red, because they're quite opposing the red and the blue. Um, they make lovely deep darks and chuck a bit of yellow in there and we get some really lovely rich browns as well. And then I also love French Ultramarine, nice clear, slightly warm, slightly muted, granulating blue can just be really nice for shadows. I may not call upon it, but I like having it there. It may just be a painting of uh, three primaries. And one of my little secret weapons that I also love is an opaque colour called Lavender. Um, obviously with enough water in it's got a bit of transparency to it. Uh, it's great for kind of doing white in shadow or just splattering a bit into a darker wash and getting some interesting effects. Again, I may or may not use it but it's there, ready to go. Big pot of water, palette, uh, kitchen roll, good to go. So fairly simple drawing in places, a little bit more detail in the face. I just use a HB or a 2B pencil. And very quickly, um, I'm always looking for a few basic principles with my drawing. Number one being simple big shapes first. What are the relationship of those shapes to each other in terms of proportion? Maybe using the head as a unit of measurement to help map out the big shapes first. Always looking for the tilt or the angle. Uh, one little trick with wildlife is we very often get some sort of connection between the, the corner of the nose and the ear and the eye usually sitting somewhere on that line, so that's a really useful thing. Um, we've got various different angles, eyebrow to eyebrow. Uh, there's all of these lovely angles on the outside of the animal, which are really important to give it the character and the gesture. Then once we've got those big shapes in place, then I home in on the smaller shapes and stick, literally stick the other bits on and eventually homing in on the very small shapes. Um, alignment is a big important thing so you know if I if I was to drop a line down from the front of the nose I kind of hit this part of the leg uh, if I draw a line across from say here what do I hit I kind of hit the little shoulder bit there and you can use these kind of vertical and horizontal lines to help align everything get it all kind of sitting nicely and working well together and then very finally I go to the small details I'm going to be doing markings today, so spots and stripes. So as well as looking for light and shadow, I'm also going to be focusing on the markings. The big things I'm going to talk about and I want to focus on are the way that the markings describe and move around the form of the animal. So we can actually use markings to really help describe the form. We have to consider their shape and their size and the way that they move, like the rhythm that they have around the animal. So notice the spots here are much bigger than the spots here. 
and they are kind of curving in that sort of a direction whereas the spots on the body are slightly smaller and they're kind of spiraling out in that sort of way and then as we move into this area here notice because the spots are not facing us they're on a plane slightly away from us they've kind of flattened out a little bit so it's not always as simple as just sticking a load of spots on you kind of need to consider the way that they're moving and the other thing I want to consider is that I'm going to make the spots in the sunlight a little bit lighter and also I'm going to make them a little bit warmer the photo they look black um, as an artist we can choose to enhance the feeling of form and the feeling of light and I'm also going to make the spots in the sunlight have a little bit of sharpness to them and I'm going to attempt to paint the spots in the shadows with a little bit more of a wet in wet approach so that we get this kind of soft fuzziness to the markings and we're really just doing what nature does there the lights are slightly sharper and harder the shadows are going to be a little bit softer a little bit more blurry I'll talk about that more as I paint because I just want to dive into this can you go back and just say about how the spots change with the angle of the animal because I sort of missed that bit yeah so um so we, we want to think about the size of the spots um, as they move around the animals so they're obviously getting smaller as they as they go from here around to there and they're also um, here they're facing us they're straight on so the spots are quite sort of round but as we go around the form of the animal to this side where the, the spots are kind of facing away from us there we're kind of seeing the spot on its side so it goes slightly s thinner uh, slightly more slanted and then look at the way they're curving around the form of the animal you can literally see these curves of the spots they almost kind of spiral out from there and spiral round to there and here they're hugging the rounded 3d form of the animal so you don't have to obsess about it too much but it is also a really useful little tool um, to enhance the feeling of light and enhance the feeling of form and all of that sort of stuff so I'm just going to kick off with the big brush we're going to dive in with the Oriolan yellow. Um, I, saw, I forgot to mention I'm using quinacridone red. Nice bright clean red, quite neutral even though it's got a bit of a cool bias. Just a really very versatile red and I'm using Oriolan yellow which although it has a coolness to it, um, better for kind of greens and things, it is bright enough, especially the Daniel Smith one, that it can make fairly vibrant oranges. You'll never get the same as if you use like a cadmium or a new gamboge or anything like that because they're warmer and more orangey already, but it is still a nice, clean, vibrant yellow and it's perfect for this sort of thing. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of get some paint down, very watery paint consistency, and I'm just gonna kind of pop it down. I do wanna reserve a few um, whites of the page, but I'm not gonna worry about them too much. I'm gonna break some color into the background as well. Uh, I want to keep this all kind of fairly light down here because we're going to be doing a very pale shadow in this area so I'm going to focus my attention kind of over um, in, the, in the lighter part. So what I'm effectively doing here is painting the lights. I'm going to use, a, kind of do it as a painting in two parts. I'm going to lay down what I would call the light group of tonal values. So that includes the white of the page which can act as a highlight it includes the um, the kind of the lighter yellowy tones and it also includes some of the ever so slightly darker orangey tones which we might call half tones um, but the idea is that I'm just laying down the light family of, of tones and I want to get lots of paint flowing together all the water kind of flowing together the pigment flowing together really laying down a nice foundation for the race the rest of the painting um, and then I'm going to come down into here and then we're going to come in with a very simple approach to the next stage of the painting after that which is to paint the gentle or soft shadow first and then we're eventually going to work down towards the deep dark shadows and I'll talk more about those in a sec but for now I'm just going to focus my attention on the light tones it doesn't mean we can't paint into the shadow areas but we're just keeping the tone nice and light for now and I'm going to reserve. Can you repeat what colour yellow that is, please? This is Oriolin yellow. Oriolin. Oriolin, uh, L-I-N. Um, it's quite. It's it's a fairly traditional yellow, but it's kind of gone out of favour because it generally doesn't have a good light fastness. However, the the Daniel Smith version of it seems to have a very good light fastness, so they say. So um, 
so I tend to use it. It's just a nice versatile yellow, I really like it. Um, so there we go, that's just a start, a load of yellow down just to get the ball rolling. It's a good way to kind of help us map out the the um, the painting. We can kind of work out where we're going to reserve some lights, what we're going to do with the background to some extent, and then I'm going to introduce a little bit of Cornacodone Red. You could easily use Alizarin Crimson, uh, Rose Mad or anything like that, a kind of vibrant, slightly coolish red. I still want the bias towards very much towards yellow, but what I'm going to do is just pick my spots in the f in the subject where I want like a little bloom of orange or something like that, so a little hot spot of orange in there. Not focusing too much on making it look like the subject, if you know what I mean. We're not, I'm not worrying about making it look like a cheetah. This is like a little bit of colour as an investment for later on in the painting. So it goes a little bit more orangey, kind of just under there. And what I'm basically imagining here is that this is my subject without any spots on it. We'll deal with those later. Um, without any um, shadow on it. I'm really just trying to create a nice sense of form within some of these lighter colours so that when we put the shadows on it'll all sort of make sense in theory. So I've brought this up to probably like a milky, milky, kind of full fat milk consistency of paint basically and that's giving the paint a little bit more depth, a little bit more tone but it's not getting it going too dark. I'm dropping a little bit of orange in there and it's just a case of how dark do you want to push it. I'm not going to push the colours too dark here. I'm going to leave them at a certain point, which means I'm not going to go too thick with the paint, but I do want to push colours a little bit darker at this stage. And just in there, there's like that little shot of brighter orange. I'm not focusing on all of the details necessarily, but I am just thinking, right, let's go a little bit stronger in colour there. Let's go a little bit stronger in colour just there. Maybe let's go a little bit stronger in colour just there and use it to trap the light on the chin a little bit and start to think about the creases of the the animal in there and there's a bit more going on in there, that sort of thing. And then just on the turn of light and shadow it gets a little bit warmer in there. We might even start to put in some spots but they're not going to be dark spots, they're going to be quite light spots just to kind of get this area moving with some spots but we're going to deal with the spots in the next stage predominantly. Okay so that's kind of the next little bit we're moving quite quickly here. Um, the paint's staying nice and wet but I do want to get a little bit of some greeny colour into the background so I'm going to take my Oriolan yellow and a little bit of Prussian blue not too much keeping the paint consistency fairly watery and I'm just going to start kind of placing that in here. Notice nothing is too dark yet while I just kind of find my way. I'm sort of working out how I'm going to tackle this painting as I go and just sort of gently finding my way with it. Nothing too out there, nothing too crazy. As long as we keep the paint thin, uh, sorry watery, almost can't go too wrong. As soon as we start committing to darker tone that's when it can be um, potentially that we we might run into problems but just we can go darker but just kind of just hold off a little bit just while we kind of work things out now I feel a little bit happier I'm gonna start going a little bit darker in places kind of working wet into wet and um, just starting to bring that into there a little bit more nice and simple let's splat the paint around a little bit make it feel a bit more expressive and we might go darker over there later and that's got a nice feeling to it. I'm going to take a very simple approach. One of the things I want to show you here is really how simple can we make our subject um, and still get something interesting. Um, so that's tail we'll deal with later. We might just pop in a little bit of colour down in there at this stage and we might even pop in a little bit of blue down in there just to kind of balance things out a little bit more. Let's get some of that green flowing into there, flowing into there. You know, just anything just to get those colours kind of working and moving together a little bit more. Chuck a little bit of red in there. I'm very close to actually just leaving this as it is. What I want to do is just take one last shot at some slightly deeper tone. 
So by this, I mean I'm going to come up to a stronger paint consistency. So I would say I'm coming up to double cream. I'm mixing my aureolin yellow, my quinacridone red. Bias towards the yellow by a long way, just enough red in there to push it towards being orangey. And I'm just thinking like, right, where do I want my, where do I want some really sort of strong shots of orange? It's not quite shadow, but we're not far off shadow. But I'm just keeping it on the lighter side for now. There's still that little shot of orange in there, which I really love. And I am keep coming back to that to try and get it. Now I'm going to soften that down into there. As long as the paint is wet, you've got time. There's, watercolour is much more forgiving than we're led to believe half the time. As long as an area is wet, you kind of do what you like with it. As long as you don't go too dark, do what you like with it. It's not, it's not as critical as it's made out to be. Yes, it's harder to make adjustments if we go too dark too quickly. Yes, it, there's, a, there's a limit to how much you can do with a painting. It's kind of like we do the painting and we get to the point where we can't really do anything else with it and it's kind of worked <laughs> or it hasn't and there's not a lot we can do about it if it hasn't really that's that's kind of where the the slightly different feeling lies with um with watercolor as opposed to the other mediums but as long as you're working with a lot of water and a lot of pigment and you're aware that it can be easy to overwork the paint if you just keep working it over and over actually watercolor is a forgiving medium you just have to be respectful of its limitations and what it can and can't do so what I'm doing here is just bringing in a little bit more tone in there there's a little bit more tone down there and actually we're getting down to a really nice place to consider stopping in a moment yeah I'm gonna let that dry off but I'm not gonna sit here and let it dry and make you guys watch paint dry I am gonna get my hair dry on it and give it a blast just while we're letting that dry, I want to take a moment to tell you about a couple of other things very quickly. If you're watching this in early 2023, uh, later on in March 23, I'm running a completely free Zoom watercolour masterclass. You can sign up for that completely free, link in the description. And I also want to mention my online watercolour school, again, link in the description. Hopefully I'll see you there. Let's get back to the painting. Okay, so that's, that's exactly the sort of start that I want. I've got some nice little whites of the page left. In the, in the really bright places. I've kept everything fairly light, fairly loose. I like that you can kind of see a hint of where the back is, but actually some of the backgrounds bled into the object and vice versa. For that, for me, that just lends itself to a more interesting painting. Obviously, I don't want the green to shoot completely into there, but a little bit of green bleeding into here and a little bit of red into the background, I think is playing to the strengths of the medium. And yes, you can work darker and darker while it's still wet. Sometimes I do that, but today I just wanted to show you a simple process of paint the light group. I'm going to come in and paint the gentle shadow. So this is not the deep darks or the spots. This is a gentle shadow, a medium shadow. What's lovely about this and most subjects is you will get one big shape or a couple of big shapes that hold the painting together and anchor the painting here this is the large shadow if i squint my eyes that follows down here all one big shape of shadow down here down here even sort of comes under there and then we've got this other big shadow shape there that's you could even kind of link those together and make one big shape but it's kind of two big shapes that anchor the painting the rest are kind of medium and small shapes in a few select places. Um, within that shape, we can have variation of tone a little bit, variation of color, but generally it's gonna be a kind of a united area of shadow to hold the painting together. And then I'm gonna work a little bit more wet into wet into those areas. The first thing I'm gonna do though, I think, yeah, is, is get that big shadow shape down. I'm gonna to come to a smaller brush actually, and it has like a bluey paleness to it over here but I'm gonna start in the darker tone up here. I'm gonna to come to my quinacridone red and aureolin yellow again, but I'm gonna give it a little bit more bias towards um, a thicker paint consistency so that we get a deeper tone. And all I'm gonna do is literally just look for the shadow shape and just paint it in there. It always feels weird when you first start doing it because it feels very out of place, but I'm kind of squinting my eyes. It comes dark into there and very quickly, we're gonna move into um, a slightly lighter tone as we come down here. So I'm gonna take that 
and just kind of bring it up into there. It almost comes to meet the eye there. And that's our kind of start point. Then what I do is I take my very clean, very ever so slightly damp brush and I just hit the edge of that in places and you'll just soften down the edge. You don't want a soft edge everywhere, so here I kind of want a sharp edge between light and shadow, but just there, just sort of softening that edge down a little bit in places. And again, this always feels weird. The first, the first sort of few marks of shadow feel very out of place. Our job as the artist is now to make sense of these initial kind of marks of shadow. And that's what our job is. So looking in here, it gets a little bit darker, just in there, a little bit darker. This is all the same mix of quinacridone red. Um, gets a little bit darker up in there. And now I'm gonna, whilst it's still wet, because I want these washes to connect together, I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna use my lavender blue. You could also use ultramarine. I might even use a bit of ultramarine. And this is gonna give us a slightly softer, more gray shadow color, which is perfect for this kind of area here. And I'm just gonna tie that straight in with the quinacridone red. We're gonna tie it all together and kind of bring it down into here. Bit more water so it doesn't go too dark. And that kind of comes over here, letting the red flow into it a little bit more and just kind of catching that shape just there. That's the shape, that shadow shape that I'm after. It doesn't look like much at the moment, it's just a start point. But that same shadow shape comes under here and it comes under the mouth into there, one big shape. And we're going to go a little bit darker so that it shows up against the lighter fur behind it. Okay, so very, very simple. Now we've got that kind of abstract shape. I'm just going to soften it in edges, in places, sorry, the edges. I'm going to do that sort of thing, just soften it down. And now we've got this big shadow shape. Now we can kind of work into that. We can work with it, we can work into it. And we're going to start pushing things progressively darker so it gets darker in the ear there. This is quinacridone red with a little bit of yellow and a little bit of blue. And just a little slightly stronger consistency of paint, moving up to its kind of single cream paint consistency. And we're just going to map these shapes in start pushing some of these areas a little bit darker and again it always looks a bit strange when you first do this but we just have to follow the process through and yeah that's beginning beginning to work already we're just going to come a little bit darker with our shadow shape in here it needs to be a little bit darker I'm working everything very wet into wet I'm going to come back to like a darker shadow shape down in in here and over the leg there. Nice kind of dark shadow shape and we will start getting into some of the the spots in a moment but we're not quite there yet but we're not far off so we're getting some of these spots a bit too dark. A little bit more water it's okay and now I need to start thinking about the rhythm of the spots obviously you could you could paint or draw sorry the spots in um, all of them. I quite like trying to find the spots as I paint. It's not always the easiest thing and it can be easy to get lost in them but it can be a really fun thing to do so I'm just kind of thinking about the movement of the spots here and the way that they vary in size and just vary the size a little bit. This area is fairly straightforward there's nothing too tricky going on. A little bit big that spot but it's okay. Um, and we'll bring the spots kind of up to up to there. They're kind of spiraling in this direction. Just really simple. That's going to be darker actually down in there. Okay, so this is a strange part of the painting, a, a strange stage of the painting. It's like, okay, kind of know what we're aiming for, but we've got a little bit of a way to go to get there. Um, and it's not quite looking like the subject yet, but it's it's laying down all the foundations of the subject, so I feel happy about that. And we're just gonna keep it moving. We're gonna start pushing in some of our deeper darks. That's when things really start to get moving. We're gonna go a little darker up there. We're gonna have a couple of spots breaking in to the light area up here. There are a couple of spots just breaking into here. They're not 
big black spots though they are um, slightly lighter and then as we come down here we're going to kind of let that color just kind of bleed into that area okay so let's just continue with these spots some of these I'm going to push a little bit darker just kind of literally spotting them in I'm going to come a little bit darker under the chin there and but I'm just kind of varying the tone and the shape and and that sort of thing as I said these spots are slightly easier because um, they are just kind of flat on to the animal that's just kind of bleeding out into the surrounding area that's fine while I let that dry off to a point where I can come back to it I'm going to come in and a few little spots in there um, that's kind of lost into nothingness over here what I want to do though is get this big shadow shape over here so more aureolin more quinacridone red and let's get this shadow shape in there nice strong cast shadow starting to bring in the oranginess a little bit more let's creep that oranginess back into this part of the animal up here so I'm working quite fast here partly because I'm I like working fast anyway but partly because I'm demonstrating I'm working a little bit faster than I might do but still it's really this is how I like to work kind of quick and fairly expressive brush stroke brush strokes if I can get them and um, keeping it fairly simple if I can just looking for light and shadow that's it just focus on painting light and shadow and your subject will eventually be born out of doing that just focusing on light and shadow so more orange in some of these we can even creep some of that orange into the spots as well create a bit more variety um, and even bring some of that orange into there there's a nice little depth of tone so a little bit more of the darker blue just in there like push that little bit a bit darker and into there just a little bit darker underneath the chin there a little bit darker in there all the time just working wet into wet that's the that's the trick for me is is just to keep it all working kind of wet into wet and then this shadow over here nice big shadow a little bit darker and that shadow kind of comes up to about there and then we're into spots and and that sort of thing again so some of this tone will dictate dictate the shadow some of it will, will show the shadow some of it will show the spots but it's basically just the same color everywhere and bringing that down to about here and then that stops and then we've got these spots kind of wrapping around the form of the animal coming in down here and then spots that eventually almost kind of turn into stripes over this way and let's just kind of stripe them as they come down into there so that's laid down all of the big shadow shapes so now our job is to kind of um, start making sense of all of this how on earth do we do that I don't know yet but we're going to give it a go and first thing to do is to bring more of these spots into here some of these spots seem to be getting smaller over here making them a bit more orange then let's creep in some darker ones too let's go a little bit darker with these ones on the back over here that feels like a nice thing to do varying the size varying the shape and we're starting to get that feeling of light and shadow um, where do we need to push in just before we go to the spots in this area where do we need to go a little bit darker I think we need to go darker in there still wet so I've got time notice I can I'm, I'm not working the paint I'm kind of placing it in there but we do have time time is on our side here that's all kind of working nicely it almost all needs to kind of dry off a bit of kind of with powering through it so quickly that I'm not I can't there's not a lot I can do in some ways let's bring those spots into there a few more spots in there how many times I'm gonna say the word spot in one demo um, comes down into there okay we can start to get some of the deeper darks in while we just wait for this to kind of dry off a little bit more we do have some of the follicles coming off there there's not many on a cheetah so we keep that very simple and start mapping in the, the overall shape of the the nose just to get something in there um, so I'm feeling I feel a bit happier then that that's kind of on the way 
and we put a little bit of an orange colour in the eye because we are eventually going to put some something into the eye there. Okay, and we're not quite past the awkward, ugly stage of the painting, painting, but we're kind of we're powering towards getting past it, if that makes sense. So that I'm just going to let all of that run together a little bit more. Um, let all of that colour just run. I'm going to let it run out into the spots here and run out into the stripes and then I think we're going to create a nice big deep um, shadow. Maybe I think we'll get a deep dark in there and if that kind of bleeds into the animal a little bit, great. If it doesn't, doesn't matter. And then that same shadow can kind of hug the bottom of the tail here doing something like that we can splat a little bit of it in there and then we're going to link that into the the stripes a little bit more the stripes of the tail so kind of almost like a dry brush approach down in the tail here and we're going to start pushing some of the shadow a little bit darker down in here this is kind of away from the focal point so I'm not too fussed about making it exactly like the photo. It's kind of like a, a suggestion without going um, kind of overboard. Something like that. Okay, nice and simple. Um, okay, this has dried off enough that I think I can come in and start doing some of the spots, but I'm gonna be very careful. I'm gonna use quinacridone red, fairly neat. And we're gonna just gonna come in here. And look, thicker paint now. So no notice how I'm painting this this very thick paint. So we'll get kind of a softness to the marks that I lay in, but because the paint is thicker, it won't completely disappear into that surrounding area. Some of these will go darker, some of them won't. Nice big spots there. Look at those amazing big spots in this area. Very simple. Um, and then down in here, because I'm using that thicker paint, it's not gonna, it's not gonna spread out too much. Little marks down in here. Get some of these working darker. And then this area here has got a lovely kind of dryness to it. And so I'm just kind of plopping them in some of these little marks. Notice how they're spreading out that little bit, but not too much. So if I'd done any earlier, these spots would just completely disappear into the surrounding area. But as it is, notice I'm going around the form of the animal now. Um, and they've got this lovely softness to them. So now I want to push some of these a little bit darker, not all of them. So I'm going to bring in still the quinacridone red, but a tiny, tiny touch of um, Prussian blue in there as well. And that's going to just darken some of these spots, particularly in the shadows. I want to go a little bit darker, kind of dry brush in here. See there's little bits of dry brush just bringing that to life. Um, we can go... Uh, did you tell us what type of paper? Because this looks like it's quite hard, wet, hard, high-duty paper. I did, yep. I meant it was Bao Hong oh, watercolor paper. Yep, yeah, it was. Um, sorry, what? Bao Hong watercolor paper. It's a Chinese oh. brand. It's a hundred percent cotton. Um, I did show you at the start. I'll just flick it out quickly. Um, that's the paper. Really lovely to work on. Um, it stays wet quite a long time, which you can probably see, and um, it's just very forgiving as well. It's a, just a really nice paper, and the colours come out very crisp. But it's also got a nice kind of refined look to the painting when it's done as well. So it's kind of a, it's a really good all round paper, really lovely. I definitely recommend giving it a go. Not everyone gets on with it. It's not to everyone's taste, but I, I love it. I think it's a fantastic paper. Um, Where do you get it from? Oh, you can get it on, you can get it online fairly easily. It's hard to get anything bigger than A3, um, but Jackson's Art Supplies, if anyone out there uses those guys, um, they sell it um gummed blocks mostly you know the little blocks of um paper and yeah i i just i recommend giving it a try good simply because it's very forgiving and it stays wet for 
for a long time and some it's a few good reasons to use it uh, it's lovely though yeah. could you just flush it up again so i can write the spelling down please there we go bao hong, ah, bao hong. this is their professional range it's quite expensive but it is okay. worth it but they also do an academic or student range and that is still a hundred percent um cotton the last time i checked and it that is also fantastic so if you if you're on a bit more of a budget or you don't want to kind of go with the really expensive paper um it is that they do a more affordable range which is still excellent and i recommend that also uh we're going to come in here and i'm just going to finish off now the the markings on the face very simple i'm going to keep the markings very very simple and come up into here nice deep dark made out of quinacridone red and um uh prussian blue very very simple <clears throat> and then that dark kind of feeds down into it and it kind of disappears a little bit more in this area a bit more wet into wet uh, a few more little dark marks in there maybe a little dark mark in there and we are really are homing in on the finish here i want to keep this very very loose very very simple there's a little bit to do in the background there's some finishing touches in the face but i would like to leave us enough time to have a go at um the tiger as well so we can look at the same principle but in relation to spots uh stripes sorry so we really just have the nose to do on the face nice simple it doesn't have to be as dark as the photo but it can be <clears throat> And then some finishing touches of some slightly darker tone in places like there's a nice little dark tone just there. There's that little dark tone in there. Just kind of giving the face a little bit more structure in places. You also get a nice little run of dark just under the eye there as well. It's a nice little feature. And we do want to go a touch darker in the nose, just in places. I'm just going to drop in like a nice deep dark just in there. <clears throat> and we need to kind of bring the head to life a little bit. It's kind of lost in the background, but I'm going to chop a little bit of background in there. Um, so that will ho hopefully sort that out. And if not, we've still got a few other tricks up our sleeve, but that should do the trick. Just a little bit of background. Um, and that's kind of that's kind of that working there's a little touch I want to do in the eye right at the end but what I'm gonna do is um, bring in a little bit more background what I do want to also do is throw part of the tail into shadow because it is that's kind of this shadow there just along there Yeah, that sort of thing. And notice the focal point, which is usually going to be the face, not always, but often and most of the time is going to be the face, has got a higher level of refinement to it. And then as I move elsewhere, it's kind of a little bit looser, not quite so worked out, um, if that makes sense. So it kind of creates a nice bit of variety then. And we have these kind of sharper marks in the shadows and then these sort of... Um, we have these uh, kind of soft, splodgy, slightly wet into wet feeling marks within the the shadow areas. So I'm going to come in with the background now. I think I'm going to keep it the same sort of colour as uh, the this over here. I think that works well. And we're going to use it to just carve out a bit of shape here. We don't have to go crazy with it, but just... A little bit of background there just kind of carves out the shape a little bit more of the animal. We're kind of using it to trap the light. We don't need to describe every single um, every single edge necessarily. We can leave lots up to the imagination of the viewer. But I want to kind of just do that sort of a thing. And then I might take that same colour but a little bit lighter and now use this to describe the head of the cheetah a little bit better. And so I think I'm going to come to about here and just kind of use it to trap the light on the head 
I'm going to come up here, nice and simple, um, come to about there I think. So start simple, I'm going to start really simple and we're just kind of trapping the light on the head there and then working out how we're going to move out from there. Um, might even use a little bit more tone just to trap the light on the front edge there. Just being quite careful in this area because I'm really trying to sculpt the the shape of the light. And then once I'm happy with that, I'm quite happy to go in a little bit darker, but I tend to sort of map it out first so that I'm happy with it. And then kind of come in a little bit darker. Let's connect that there, make it feel a bit more interesting. And we are very, very close to being done. Okay, so we are just want to finish off the eye. Uh, I slightly made the eye a touch too big, but this is where our opaque colour comes in handy. I've got this lovely blue colour, lavender, and it's just going to work to look, I think, like white in shadow potentially. So I'm just going to pop that in there and it's going to hopefully soften the eye colour down. We've always got opaque white if we want to use it. I personally have absolutely no problem using a little bit of opaque white here and there. I don't think you know, it doesn't work if you use it everywhere. It's no substitute for the whites of the page, but if it's the difference between a painting that works and doesn't, then whatever it takes to to make it work, it's, it's still watercolor. Um, I know there's a whole school of people that are very against opaque white, but, and, and I do agree that it doesn't work if you use it everywhere, uh, less is more, all of that sort of stuff, but it does, for me, have its place. We also have things like whiskers. I'm not going to bother with those in this particular painting, but on a slightly larger painting, we definitely could consider them. A uh, little bit more detail in there. Darker in there. A little bit of just a few little sharp marks at the end of the painting just to make it kind of pop. Um, generally kind of dry brush, so a little bit thicker. And we're kind of, yeah. We're kind of nearly there with it, I would say. I think I just want to sort out the eye. Um, I've, I did leave a nice little blast of orange in there. I've, I've kind of covered that up, which was a mistake, if you want to call it that. But we can easily put it back in. I'm going to take my opaque, not my opaque, but just my orange neat out of the tube. And there's a little slice of orange, and it is there in the photo. And I think it just lends the eye a little something extra that I think it needs and I also want to put a little highlight in there so this is where we might take our opaque white and I just take it straight out of the tube pop it on the brush and just one or two little strikes of it in places I'm going to just pop a little little highlight in the eye and I just want to cut back into the shape of the eye here and just kind of shrink it down a little bit and I think that's it guys that as I said it's a little bit faster than I would paint normally but the principles are all the same and I do like to work fast if I can it stops me kind of messing around too much um, watercolor generally prefers if we work kind of fast and fairly immediate and um, and that's when interesting stuff kind of happens so if I can work kind of fast and free, I do like to do so. The, the two things that I wanted to really show you were um, how simple can we make our subject, even if, uh, um, and if we just paint light and shadow, it will still look like the subject. It will still be a perfectly good painting. We can get really interesting paintings just by painting light and shadow. And then it was obviously the markings was the other thing and making the markings kind of softer and fuzzier in the shadows um, and slightly darker at times and generally a little bit cooler and then as those markings moved into sunlight they've purposely got kind of sharper more defined they've got warmer so they're a bit more orangey uh, and yeah they're also lighter and, and it's that play of kind of light and shadow soft and hard cool and warm all of those little things um, our tools at our disposal as watercolorists to kind of achieve what we want to achieve. So That's it guys. 
I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it useful. It was a huge amount of fun to paint. I've got a few more of these types of videos coming up. Don't forget all the places you can find me are in the description, links below, and happy painting. I'll see you very soon.